Hi, I'm Robin Worley, and welcome to Lenscraft. Today, I'm exploring how you can enhance the detail in your photos to make them pop, and I'll be using four different Nick Collection filters to do this. You'll find all four of these filters in the Nick Color Effects Pro plugin. The image I'll be using is this misty bad weather scene. What I want to achieve is to enhance the detail in the foreground rocks to make it more obvious. But please remember, as you're watching these examples, I'll be using very strong adjustments to help you see the effect more clearly in the video. When you come to do this, you may want to reduce the strength of the effect. Now let's look at the first of our four Nick Collection filters. The Detail Extractor filter is probably the first filter that comes to mind when you want to emphasize the detail in a photo. The first thing I want to show you is that the filter still has an effect even when you set all the adjustments to zero. You may find this is enough of an enhancement for many images. The effect also becomes more noticeable when I set the effect radius to large. Now watch what happens when I move the Detail Extractor slider to the right. You can see that it's opening the shadows and emphasising the texture in the rock at the same time. If you watch the histogram when I adjust the filter, it can give you clues as to what's happening. As I move the slider to the right, the histogram draws into the centre. This is because the filter is enhancing the mid-tone contrast in the image, but at the expense of the shadows and highlights. If you find the effect on the shadows and highlights is too strong, try increasing the contrast slider. This causes the shadows to become darker and the highlights lighter, but it doesn't affect the midtones very much. It's the midtone contrast adjustment that's enhancing the detail. Let's now switch the effect radius between fine, normal and large. As I do this, notice how it's creating a different effect. The large radius setting tends to emphasize the larger structures in the image, whilst the fine detail tends to enhance the much finer details. When I'm using a strong detail extractor setting, the fine radius can cause an unnatural effect which is less obvious with the large setting. Using a strong detail extractor setting can also cause the image to look undersaturated. Moving the saturation slider over to the right can help correct the problem. There are though a couple of things to look out for that you may have noticed whilst I've been explaining the sliders. First, there's rain spots on my lens which have become much more obvious. If you have any dust on your sensor, this adjustment will emphasize the problem, so be sure to carefully review your image after applying it. The other problem you may come across is halos being created around high contrast edges. When I zoom to 100% magnification, you can see an obvious halo around the rocks. One way to deal with this in the image is by using a negative control point to remove the adjustment from the sky. Remember, Areas of clear tone like the sky don't respond well to detail enhancement, so it's often a good idea to do this. The second filter I want to look at is the Pro Contrast filter. As I've already mentioned, a lack of mid-tone contrast is often why detail isn't clear. It's also how many of the dehaze filters work in tools like Lightroom. They move the image tones from the brighter areas of the histogram down into the mid-tone areas. Another problem you often find in photos with poor detail is that it's hidden in the shadows. Our eyes can find it difficult to distinguish between the changes in shadow tones. The Pro Contrast filter helps to fix this by using something called a Dynamic Contrast Slider. When I use a correct contrast slider to make a traditional contrast adjustment, what shot happens to the histogram? The dark tones in the image become darker and the light tones lighter. Now watch what happens when I use the dynamic contrast slider instead. Suddenly, the detail in the shadows appears to pop out and becomes easier to see. If you watch the histogram as I move the slider, it doesn't push the highlights and shadows out like you see with a regular contrast adjustment. Instead, the shadow tones in the histogram move into the mid-tone area, making it easier to see the detail. As with the first filter, you should use control points to remove the effect from areas like the sky. Now let's look at another method of making your photo detail pop. The next filter we're going to use is the Bleach Bypass effect. 
Whilst bleach bypass is a traditional fine art effect that darkens and desaturates the image, we can also use it to enhance detail. I'll start by removing the adjustment from the four sliders to help you see what we're doing. Unfortunately, there will always be a contrast adjustment with this filter because the minimum setting is 20%. If you find this causes clipping in your image, you may want to try fixing it using the shadows and highlights sliders. Now the slider we want to use to make our details pop is the local contrast slider. This creates a significant detail enhancement, but has a couple of side effects to be aware of. First, you might find the image contrast suffers when you make this adjustment. If it does, you can correct it by increasing the contrast slider. If this then causes the image to become too dark, try lightening it with the brightness slider. The other problem you might encounter is that the saturation can become muted. This is, after all, a bleach bypass effect filter. Do try to correct this with the saturation slider, although it doesn't allow much of an adjustment. An alternative is adding a brilliance and warmth filter. Then you can use the saturation and perceptual saturation sliders. It can also help you to use control points with this filter to focus the adjustment onto specific areas. For example, we could remove the effect from the sky with a negative control point. With this image, the foreground rocks might also benefit from increasing the warmth to emphasize the feeling of depth. Comparing this with the original image, you can see that it's made a substantial difference to the detail in the rocks. The final filter we're going to look at as a way of making photo details pop is the contrast only filter. When you apply a contrast only adjustment, it increases the image contrast, but in a way that doesn't affect colours. But it can make the image look very dark as you can see here. One easy way to fix this is using the soft contrast slider and moving this to the left. By applying a negative soft contrast adjustment to the image, you will open the shadows and reveal the detail there. We can then fine tune the effect using the brightness, contrast and saturation sliders. As before, consider using a negative control point to remove the effect from areas like the sky. If you compare this with the original image, you can see the difference that it's made to the rock detail. We've now looked at four different Nick Color Effects filters that you can use to make the details in your photos pop. What you may not have noticed is that whilst they all enhance details, each produces a different effect. It's a good idea to experiment with these so you can pick the one that best suits the photo you're editing. So next time you have a photo where you want to make the details pop, try using one of these Nick Collection filters. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please take a moment to share it with others and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you next week for another video. Thank you.